Okay. So again, I'm so sorry. I have been sick the last couple of days, so I'm totally congested and I sound like crap, but I'm really excited to talk to you guys about meal prep because I know that this isn't something that overwhelms you. I know it's something that is brand new for a lot of you. And I know, so I'm sure I'm all my containers here. Um, I was in the exact same boat, guys. I grew up in a very unhealthy family. Uh, we ate out more than we ate in. We were on the go 24-7, so it's just what we kind of did and stuff. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I totally get it. So my first advice is just take a deep breath, and it's a learning curve. And don't expect yourself to be perfect this first couple weeks. Um, it takes getting used to, it takes adjustment, um, but it, it's a process. And nutrition has always been where I personally have struggled the most because, um, like I said, I came from a family that was very unhealthy. So I could work out because someone's there in front of me telling me exactly what I need to be doing. They say, okay, you need to do 10 lunges, two squats here, a couple jumps here. They can break it down for me. But nutrition always was my hardest because no one was in the kitchen telling me exactly how to prepare. No one was in the kitchen telling me exactly what to put on my meal plan. And so it was always a struggle, and it still is. And so I've gotten, remember, I've been doing this, I've been coaching for three years now, but I started my fitness journey in September before that. So that's three, three months, three years, three months around that time. So I've had practice, um, but you know, I wasn't perfect at the very beginning. In fact, I knew nothing about nutrition and I mean, I did know some, but it just what, it what wasn't my specialty. So take a breath, relax. And if it totally scares you and overwhelms you, it's okay. I will be here for you. I will never just leave you high and dry. Um, so if you have questions, you will never bug me. Please, please, please. You get, like I get these messages all day long. People are like, I'm so sorry I'm bugging you again. No, I'd much rather hear from you and knowing that you're struggling than not hearing from you and you just falling off the place of, you know, the, off the planet of the earth, off the face of the planet. Yeah. If my mind was working today, I'll tell you. Um, but I have right now, this is my core to force. I, my 21 day fix, like, um, meal plan book is pretty much shredded, um, between having it for a couple years and having two kids and literally everything else. Um, it's just, it's just not as nice, as nice looking anymore. Um, core de forest has the portion control containers. So it's, it's literally like the exact same meal plan. There's only one week yet you, you adjust an extra fruit, but it's the exact same thing. So what I'm showing you right now is going to look just like what you guys have in the 21 day fix. This is like the container portion system. And um, so as we go through it, um, just realize as I'm showing you this book, it's the exact, exact same thing. Um, but this book, your 21 day fix book, whatever program you got, this little book is going to be your Bible. This is what you are going to be carrying around with you when you grocery shop. This is, or, you know, if you don't want to carry the grocery store, make your list out before. But if you're at work, you're taking this book with you. If you are anywhere that you or will be eating, you're taking this book with you. And that's why my 21 day fix is literally missing pieces out of it. It's been taped. It's been everything else. Um, because this is going to be your Bible. This is how you're going to learn how to eat properly. Um, I was someone who did several yo-yo dieting, um, you know, and, and they, you know, sometimes it worked temporarily, but I always gained it back plus some, I never had energy, uh, because I was starving myself or I wasn't eating carbs and carbs are, are what fuels you and gives you the energy. So when I was doing these crazy, no carb, low carb diets, it, you know, I knew better. Um, but I wanted the results and you're going to get results if you trust this process. Um, a couple of things people worry about is in the beginning, you're going to feel, most people feel like they're eating a lot of food and that's okay. Um, some people say, I can't even get this much food in. That's okay. But don't make an excuse not to eat your fruits and vegetables just because you're feeling full. So you get your carbs and your proteins and you skip your fruits and vegetables. Okay. And so if you are ever at the point where you're like, I, I can't eat this much food, Make sure you're getting your fruits, vegetables, your protein, and um, like your healthy fats in before you know you're getting all your carbs. So you're not eating three carbs in the morning and then like, oh, I'm stuffed now for you know throughout the day. So, um, sorry guys, I just have to deal with my sickness here. 
Um, so a couple things I want to remind you of is the very first step you're going to do is take your measurements, okay? If you have any problems doing the, the calculations, let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you. But you're pretty much taking your current weight, you're gonna times it by 11, um, you're gonna add 400 because that's your calorie burn, that's what you're going to be like burning. Then you can subtract 750 and that's gonna give you your caloric base. So that's how much food you should be eating. So if you were counting calories, you would be fitting in that category. Um, again, no one should ever be eating less than a 1200 calorie diet. Um, you know, that's category A. If you are in the plan D and fall above the 2400 calories, you just stick with uh, plan D, okay? And then, um, so, so re realize that. Um, the nice thing and what I love is some people don't trust this and they think I'm eating too much food, I'm gonna cut back. The problem with cutting back on the food is your body needs to know it's going to get fed and it's gonna get fed nutrients. And so if you're not eating enough food, just like if you're overeating, you're not going to see the results because your body's going to hold on to things, not knowing when it's going to get another carb, not knowing when it's going to get more protein or healthy fat. And so, and that's what happens to us when we, you know, when you do these crazy diets where, you know, you might do a no carb. Yeah, you're going to lose weight at first. Your body starts catching up and then it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm in starvation mode. And so you start getting back. So then you start slowly craving the carbs. You start slowly craving the sweets again. And next thing you know, you're binge eating and you're weighing way more than what you started because you, you have deprived yourself of these things that your body needs to function at its peak level. And so, um, and that's what I love. You're getting your carbs, you're getting your healthy fats. You know, it's just choosing the kind of carbs that, that you um, should be eating that your body can process more easily and provide the fuel for, for your body. So we're gonna go over this. Before I start to, um, one of the things I would suggest, especially if you're someone who likes to meal plan three or four days out, is these containers on Amazon. Um, we bought these, let me share my screen with you. Um, these containers are amazing. If you are someone who likes to plan ahead and say you're cooking chicken, um, but there's different brands. I don't remember what brand we bought. We have the three compartment, but they have other ones that have four and five compartments. Um, but I love these um, because what you can do, and I'll show you a picture. One of my coaches actually just posted a picture tonight if I remember who it is. I'm trying to remember who it is as I talk to you. But, why isn't this? Oh, there we go. So you can use these like, like for $15. If you have Prime, it's free shipping. Um, you can use these to meal prep. So if you're going to be making like chicken, you can, you, you can, you know, put this in your fridge, it doesn't take up much room. So you can separate your berries out. Like if you're someone who works, you know, goes to work, especially if you um, don't have a family, a lot of people say, it's just me. Like how, how do I prep for just me or whatever it is. You can get these and um, you can literally, you know, place your carb in here. You can place your turkey in here. Like I usually put our proteins on this side. Um, you know, obviously salad doesn't keep as long, but you'll be okay if you don't put your vegetables. Usually if I just put like the lettuce itself and then put the vegetables on the side, or not the vegetables, but like the tomatoes, and, like the stuff that's going to be wet that might cause the, the, the lettuce to go soggy. But um, you can, you know, easily do that. You can put, you just, like separate your fruits and stuff. So you can use the containers to prep and then dump. And then you can just put these in your fridge. So you can just pull from it when you're, you're going to lunch or, you know, or you're going off to work. So these, these containers are extremely nice, especially if you're on the go. If you have a full-time job, you know, you're just not home all day long. I highly suggest these. Again, not mandatory by any means, but they just make life a little bit easier. And um, I'm going to show you, I think... It was my coach, Cassie, who just posted a picture tonight. Let me see. Um, real fast. Let me get off these. Sorry. Um, so, I think this is one of my coaches. So you can kind of see how she meal prepped. Yeah, it was her. So, she's meal prepping for the week. She actually works with my husband. Um, her and her husband work with my husband. And so you can see that she has spent the day, like she, she looks like she made some, um, this is actually on my meal plan 
for quarter course week one, the slow, cook, slow cooker turkey meatballs. So you can see she has it here. She has it in another tray. She has, um, looks like rice here that she has, and maybe some kale or spinach or something along those lines there. Um, so you can see how she, she has the, the three compartment ones. These are three compartments. So she has like her tomatoes. Looks like she might have rice or something in that one. She has corn. But you can see how she has kind of put it together. So this is probably like her lunch meal. So when she goes to, you know, to work, she can just pull out the fridge. She's ready to go. She's not having to stress about, you know, what she's going to have that day. She already has planned and is ready to go. So does that, this part kind of make sense? The containers and what they're used for. Does anyone have questions about these containers? Okay. All right. So the next couple of tips I want to give you for um, meal prepping. Especially <clears throat> when I first started, I started super, super simple. And I'm going to give you my recipes for my two most simple things in the world. Um, one is chicken in the crock pot. So all you have to do for this <clears throat> is I buy two cans, depending on your size family, <coughs> excuse me, um, but depending on your size family, obviously you're going to fluctuate if it's just you or, you know, you have a family of five or whatever. But I take my frozen chicken. I literally have frozen chicken that we have bought when it's on sale, usually when it's like $1.88 or whatever, a pound. You know, I'll buy a bulk of chicken. I'll put it in my freezer, <clears throat> and when, you know, I, I, we have a vacuum seal thing that we, you know, put in our freezer, and then when I'm going to cook, let's say I'm going to pull out my chicken, all I do is I put my frozen chicken inside my crock pot, I take about two cans of um, low sodium or no sodium uh, chicken broth, and I put that at the bottom. You can also just use water. If you want to use water, chicken broth is a little bit more seasoning. And then I use Mrs. Dash, Mrs. Dash garlic and herb and onion and herb to flavor. I just put it right on top, just shake it, put it right on top. And depending on if I cook it on high or low, it's going to be anywhere from three to seven hours, right? Like just depending on um, what I do there. And then when it's done, I pull it out and you, you can literally just take two forks and it'll just shred to pieces. Like you can just shred it super, super tender. And so it just will literally shred or um, people like to put like in like a blender or KitchenAid mixer and mix up because it'll shred that way as well. And that's going to be my, so if I cook chicken, my dinner that night for like three nights is going to be chicken. And so with that chicken, I might make barbecue pizza. I might make chicken tostadas. I might make chicken tacos. I might make, uh, I can't even think right now, um, chicken, uh, salsa chicken, black chicken and rice. Um, but what I do with that chicken, once it's cooked, I put it into like Ziploc bags or containers for four different nights or three different nights, depending on what I'm doing with my family. And so what I'll do is I'll take that, that chicken in my base because I put the garlic and herb and the onion and herb because let's be honest, those two seasonings can really, are very versatile. They can be put, you know, with almost any meal. And then let's say I'm going to make barbecue chicken pizza. I can add the barbecue sauce into that and make my barbecue chicken. I can put it on a flatbread pizza, which would be like a yellow, right? A, well, you can put it on a wheat tortilla and cook it that way. Um, you know, so my yellow would be the tortilla or the bread underneath if it's wheat. Um, and then I could put the barbecue sauce on, which would be, you know, your chicken's going to be a red. And then I can top it with my vegetables. So I could use cheese, which would be a blue container. And I could put the cheese on top and then some vegetables. So I could, if I wanted um, onions and peppers or whatever I wanted, I could put on the very top of, of the pizza. Okay, so I could take that same chicken that I made in the crock pot, and let's say I'm going to make, we like to make a, um, like a salsa chicken. So I can put that same chicken on Tuesday night, I can put it in my frying pan, put a little bit of water in it just to moisten up, add some salsa into the frying pan, and just let it like simmer into the chicken, right? And then I can take that chicken and put it over rice. So I could have salsa chicken, which would be my red, right, because salsa, and the chicken, and then I could put it over some yellow, um, some brown rice, which is yellow, and I can pair it with an apple or something like that, for, or a salad or whatever I wanted for the side, okay? And so 
that same chicken on come Wednesday night, let's say I have some more, I can make tacos. I can put it in a tortilla. I can put it in, um, I could just make that same and make a taco salad with it. But it's super easy. And that's what I mean. I don't overthink about, like, especially when you're first learning how to meal prep, don't worry about finding all these recipes and, and everything. Stay simple. Stay to what you know. Um, what I usually do, too, is let's say we're eating barbecue chicken on Monday night. That's going to be our Monday night dinner as a family. I will take that meat, that barbecue meat, that, I, that we've made and I'll throw it into my lunch and I might put it on a salad to have like a barbecue chicken salad. I might put it in a wrap, you know, I might put it on some bread and make a sandwich out of it. And so if I had, you know, the bread um, or a wrap depending on, and I just forgot because that bread is, I know it's yellow, but I can't remember if it's one or two. Um, but yeah, so I, I'll take my dinner and that meat that I made will become my lunch. So I'm not having to come up with a brand new meal for breakfast, lunch, dinner, but I'll take that meat, whatever it was, and so, so sometimes it's, I just eat the, the plain leftover, but a lot of times we'll have extra meat or whatever, and I'll save a little bit, and I'll throw it into a salad or a wrap or um, a sandwich of some sort and just keep it su super simple, okay? And then just throw like an apple with it or carrots or whatever. Um, and also, if you want to think about salads, all my meal prep, and um, let me see if it pulled open here. If not, I will open it. One sec. <clears throat> if you have questions, just feel free to unmute. Let me share my screen with you here in just a sec. And so, because this is the most amazing ranch I promise you will ever eat. And it counts as a red container. So people, can, a lot of times people can't get their protein in. That's sometimes where they struggle more is getting their protein in. And so depending on how much ranch, so if you, like if you're like ranch, you like to dip your barbecue chicken in ranch, guilty. Like that was one of my like biggest like non-healthy things that I used to do all the time. And um, this ranch has been amazing. It is on both last week. It's actually on my meal prep this week. I didn't share my screen, did I? Um... My meal prep for this week, it's called turkey chili, chicken tacos, chicken fingers, steak fajitas, tuna salad, chicken. I know it's on here somewhere. If not, it's on my other one, but oh, right there. Homemade protein ranch. This is so yummy. Okay, it sounds gross if you put it together because it has like cottage cheese and Greek yogurt, um, skim milk, lemon juice, onion powder, garlic powder, dried dill, mints, uh, green onions, parsley. This is a super, super good one. I will tell you if you're someone who doesn't like to prepare, I know it's not completely clean and I don't know what container it would be considered. I always count it um, as a red because it's Greek yogurt. But let me pull it out of the fridge real fast so you can see what it looks like. One sec. Okay. So... We count this because it's Greek yogurt, so I'll count it as a red. I, like I said, it's not completely clean eating, but where you don't want to start from square one, I don't feel like you have to be overwhelmed. But this brand, it's called Opa, okay? It's Greek yogurt ranch. Um, you would buy it like where the salads, you can just get like, like at Walmart, you don't have to go to a specialty store or anything. And um, where like the bag salads are, you're going to see this brand, Opa. There's a couple other brands. This is by far what I've seen, at least at Walmart, the healthiest that they've had. But for example, um, two tablespoons is only 60 calories, where two tablespoons of ranch is usually about 180 calories. So it's, you know, way less. Um, and honestly, this tastes so much better to me. This is more like a restaurant ranch. You know, I like can go out and like, it just always tastes better at a restaurant. This is kind of what it tastes like. It's more creamy. Um, and stuff like that. Um, so I like this brand. They also make a, um, this is the Opa. This is a strawberry poppy seed. And again, this is only 60 calories for two tablespoons. 
And then they also make a um, avocado cilantro. So when like we're making tacos or whatever, sometimes I'll throw this in with my salad the next day. Um, but like I said, the Opa brand was always by far the more healthier versions of, um, you know, but like I said, it's not completely clean eating. So if you're a clean eater, this isn't for you. But if you're starting off, this is what I would use. Um, so you don't get overwhelmed. And um, I promise you'll still see results. It's way better than what you probably were eating prior, if you're anything like me. So, um, but yes, so that is my favorite chicken um, crock pot recipe. Like I said, I'll take that chicken, I'll throw it in usually like a Sunday or a Monday, and literally that chicken takes about four minutes to prep. So by the time I open the chicken, I cut it open, I throw it in, put the, um, everything in there, it takes about four, like four minutes. And so I'll use that chicken and then just separate it for my three or four meals. If you're someone that is feeding a large family, we don't want you eating separate meals than what your kids are eating, right? Um, sometimes, like if I'm having black beans, one of my kids cannot tolerate the texture of a bean. Um, it like literally like makes him throw up. So like if we're having a black, be a chicken and black bean um, dinner with like uh, rice, I'll put it into a tortilla for him. So I'll put like the chicken, I'll put some rice in a tortilla and I'll roll it up with a little bit of cheese and he calls it a cheese roll up. So sometimes I do modify in that aspect, but you know, most of the time they're eating the same things. Every once in a while, my kids luck out and it's something they absolutely hate and they'll get a thing of mac and cheese. We're not perfect. We still have mac and cheese at our house. Um, you know, we still have those things. Mac and cheese does not tempt me at all. So it's not bad. If mac and cheese tempts you, don't buy it. <laughs> um, you know, do something else for a backup for your kids. But, um, you know, so realize that. Um, and then my other recipe that I use a lot. So if you haven't done ground turkey, I was so against it because I thought, I, I, okay, something about me, I don't think outside the box when it comes to eating. I don't do anything from the ocean, not because I'm against it, but because it totally grosses me out. I dissected a fish in high school, and ever since then, I can't even, like, do it. Um, so I don't eat, like, I'll do tuna, which is weird because I know that's the more, like, fishiest of all fish, but I can eat it in, like, a tuna salad, and that is it. That's as extreme as I get. Um, so if it doesn't come from my chicken, if it doesn't, or yeah, it doesn't come from like a chicken or a cow or a pig, I never ate it. And I wasn't someone that branched off. So the fact that like ground turkey completely like grossed me out and I thought there's no way. So I thought, okay, I'm going to buy a little thing and I'm going to throw it in like a casserole, right? Because it kind of like, you can't really tell if everything's kind of blended. And I couldn't, I really couldn't even tell like the difference. And so I started making it with like my chili and stuff, just kind of like disguising it. And I couldn't tell a difference. And next thing we know, I like my husband had no idea that I had switched over. And he's like, it took him like a good six months to, for him to realize I was even buying ground turkey. And so if you haven't tried it, first of all, it's so much cheaper than ground beef is. It's way cheaper. So talk about um, how eating healthy can be expensive. That is one thing that I can say hands down, it is way cheaper um, is to get ground turkey. And I always just buy the Genio brand. We shop at Sam's Club so you can buy the big tubes of it. Um, and at Walmart, the fresh stuff is actually cheaper than the tube. So um, at least at our Walmart. So, um, but what I do, and you can do the same thing with ground beef or ground turkey, you'll learn that like crock pot is gonna be your best friend, if you, especially if you have a family or you have a job, and um, because it doesn't take much to prepare. And it makes just life a lot easier. And so um, what it is, is you'll just put in, for every pound of ground turkey, you're going to put in a quarter cup of water into your crock pot. So I sometimes do it frozen. It, it, it's okay. It just takes longer, obviously, frozen. But you have to ma like mash it up as it unthawed. So just make sure you're, like, you're grounding it, you know, like you would in the frying pan. Um, just make sure that you kind of chop it down or else it'll kind of burn. But for every cup of water or for every pound, you're going to put a quarter cup of water. And I season it the same way. I put the Mrs. Dash onion and um, herb and the garlic and herb. And then we have a bunch of like, like the spicier, you know, Mrs. Dash flavors too. She, Mrs. Dash is sodium free. I don't know if I said that. That's why we use Mrs. Dash at our house because it is sodium free. Um, and so if I was doing ground beef or ground turkey, what I would do is I would do the exact same thing I did with my chicken. I would proportion it out into like containers. So I know, okay, this container is going to be for like, we had, we did that this week and we had sloppy Joe casserole. 
So I make sloppy joes. I take the sloppy joe seasoning um, <clears throat> and I put a little bit of um, no sugar added ketchup and no sugar added barbecue sauce in it um, with a packet of sloppy joe mix that I just buy from Walmart, you know, just the, the one. And I chop up zucchini. I don't have a spiralizer yet. That's on my dream list. So every time I do it, we just chop it up. Um, I just chop it in half and then, you know, so they're like a, qu a quarter piece of zucchini. I put the zucchini a little bit of um, oil and I put it in the oven and let the, um, I don't like my vegetables too crunchy, so I put it in the oven first to let it um, soak a little bit, so to make it soft. And then I throw the sloppy joes on top so there's no carbs in it. And I'm using the zucchini as the noodles. I put that on top. I put a little bit of cheese, which would be my blue container. And then I put a little bit of green onions on top. So instead of using bread um, for sloppy joes like you would like a hamburger bun, we've turned it into a casserole and just made it with zucchini. And so we, we've done that with a ton of things. A lot of, um, we've like bell pepper nachos. I shared that recipe the other day. <clears throat> That's one of our family like staples in our house is the bell pepper nachos. So instead of tortilla chips, we use bell pepper nachos. Um, even my kids absolutely love that one. Um, we use the sweet, um, so we use like a, the, the yellow color um, bell pepper, so it's like a sweeter, so it's not spicy for my kids. Um, but I'll take that ground turkey and I'll make different meals with it. I might make spaghetti one night. I might make um, sloppy joe casserole. We might make, put it into a taco salad. And, um, you know, we might make some kind of, of casserole dish with it. Um, and so... Start simple. Don't overthink and don't overwhelm yourself with this. And then, you know, what I do when I actually sit down to meal plan is I plan my dinners first. And so, because once I have my dinners planned, then I can, the next day, the lunch is already planned because I can take that meat and throw it into some kind of salad. So I can take the chicken and throw it into a salad or a wrap or, you know, something along those lines. And then once I have those dinner, and my breakfast is always Shakeology. And I make my Shakeology the exact same every single day. Right now I'm going to have strawberry. And I've been a strawberry holic since I've gotten it. And I, I put Energize in it. Beachbody has a supplement called Energize. It's a pre-workout. And so um, I put that in it, um, which it does not count as any containers. I do um, a cup of water, strawberry, half banana, and spinach. So I'm using your Shakeology is always going to be a red, and then whatever you add to it. So you have for my Shakeology, my um, strawberry is a red, my banana is a purple, and my spinach is a green. So and um, that's how, what I have every single morning, so I don't have to worry, worry about that. So once I have the dinner and then the lunch the next day and then Shakeology, I'm really just needing to plan my snacks every day. And so um, you'll see my meal plans that I do make, and those are for anyone to, like, follow. And sometimes I follow those to a T, and then other times I make the chicken and we completely change them. And so that was the case last week. Um, I have a plan. And if, you know, a lot of times they're fancier, like plans, if I have the ambition and the motivation. And if I have one of the weeks, like this week, if I'm sick, I get doubt I'll be making a nice dinner probably tomorrow night. So I'll probably do chicken in the crock pot and do something like a chicken, like a chicken tostada tomorrow. And so um, something that's just super low key, I'm not going to have to stress about it. And so, um, but once I have, so when I sit down and plan, <clears throat> let me share my screen again. Sorry guys, I am like, just my throat is so scratchy. Let me show you, let me get my blank one out. Um, well, I can even just use this one, but um, let me open. That's <clears throat> uh, week one. There we go. I think I'm hoping this is the right one. Okay. Yep. This is what I'm looking for. All right. So this is, this is available to you. It's in the, um, 
the challenge group on Facebook. So what I would do, I, I am someone, so I have to have a snack before I go to bed or else my blood sugar drops and I go nuts and I wake up super cranky. So I do like to have a snack before seven o'clock every night. Um, some people don't like to eat that late. And so if that's you, you can scratch that. Um, but I do, I don't ever have like a carb before I go to bed. I you'll have either like almonds or fruit or something. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go and plan my dinner. So let's say we're going to do barbecue chicken pizza. Okay. Then for lunch tomorrow, I'm going to take the barbecue and I'm going to have a barbecue chicken salad. And then I know we have chicken. So I'm going to say I'm going to make a chicken tostada here. Chicken tostada. And I'm going to take that chicken and I'm going to make a tortilla wrap. So with the leftover chicken, I don't know why it's showing red, but it's no big deal. And chicken salad with ranch. With ranch. And then let's say I prepped enough for enough barbecue chicken. So let's say we're gonna need the salsa chicken, okay? And usually by this day, my chicken's probably all gone for lunch. So I might switch it up a little bit on this day, unless I still have a little bit left over. And then let's say I'm gonna take the ground beef and let's say I'm gonna make the sloppy joe casserole. And then I'm gonna take that, the same meat from the sloppy joe casserole and I'm gonna throw it into, um, like I might have a sloppy joe, I know this sounds weird, but I've done like sloppy joe tostadas. You know, I just put it like on a flat tortilla and then put the stuff on top and then put it in the oven and then cut it up like a pizza. So I'm just gonna put sloppy joe pizza. And then here might be, I don't know why it's not moving. Okay, so let's say we do with the with the turkey meat, we might do taco salad. And then we might have bell pepper, or um, so here I might have either taco salad leftover again, or I take that, you know, so I could do taco salad leftover. And then let's do bell pepper nachos. Except I just realized this is my cheat meal. Every Friday night is our date night, so we just plan ahead what we're gonna be eating and where we're going, so I kinda know look at the menu and just make better choices that night. And then, so let's just say I'm having taco salad here instead. So now I have my dinners planned and I have my lunches planned, okay? And so, and my shako, my breakfast is always my shako, okay? So I can just put those in here. Okay, so then I just need to, okay, so I, and I always put, when, you know, when I actually have time, I'll, you know, I would put one red, one purple, one green. I'd put barbecue pizza is going to be one yellow. It's going to have chicken, so it's going to be one red. And I may have vegetables on it, so it's going to be a green. So I would go through and say, okay, right now I have two greens here, or one green here, one green here. Let's say I had a salad, so I had maybe two greens here. So that would be all my vegetables. I need four containers of greens. So that'd be all my vegetables, but I have no fruit. So then I would say, okay, I'm gonna pair, uh, this would be a fruit here, but I'm gonna add an apple here at dinner time so I can get my fruit in. My snack, I need an apple, or I need a fruit here, so I know I'm gonna do a fruit. So I might do raspberries, and I hardly have any red, so I'm gonna do Greek yogurt with it. So I'm just literally going through, and I'm working kind of backwards in meal planning after I have my dinners, and then I schedule my lunch according to my dinner the next day. So then I would just go through and see what, what do I need left over for my snack? Do I need yellow so I can have some crackers or a pita bread or hummus, um, a banana and um, almond butter or something like that? Um, <clears throat> those are one of my favorite snacks too. Sometimes I like to have like toast with avocado and tomato on it. So I would literally just work backwards to fulfill my meal plan for the week. So. Does that make sense? Does that help? Do you have questions? Did this confuse you more? Talk to me. What do you guys need or want or 
what we have four minutes before it kicks us off if it kicks us off and we still want to talk just click onto the same link i just don't pay for it this is the free version so but we can hop on the same link if we get kicked off so feel free to unmute yourself if you have questions anything as you just listened to me slurp my water down sorry anything that's not related to meal planning that you have questions about anyone in tears because i just confused you even more i can't see like anyone's faces right now so i don't know if i'm talking if anyone's crying because they're so overwhelmed or okay Anyone? Anyone. I'm a teacher, so I like silence. By nature, I was always told silence means thinking. And for some reason, you don't have to unmute. You can always do the chat box, or if you have a question, you can put in the chat down here at the very bottom. Okay. Seriously though, please reach out to me. If you are totally stuck, I will help you do the most basic, basic meal plan that you could ever imagine. Um, like literally, and there's so many recipes in your book. And um, these, obviously this is like my, my um, quarter de force one, but there's like spaghetti squash with turkey meat sauce. Pinterest will be your best friend. If you just put in 21 day fix approved meal or portion control meals, there's tons and tons of recipes. If you're on my like page, I post a healthy recipe every single day that has the portion control containers laid out too. So you can always go to my like page and scroll and say, oh, that looks good. That looks good. Oh, that looks gross. No, thanks. But, um, you know, if you're looking for ideas, always go to my like page. Um, and you can, I always have a recipe a day I post on there. So, okay. All right. Let's kick this into high gear this week, guys. I'm super excited. It's so fun to see you guys' accomplishments this week. Keep it up. And if you have questions and you don't want to talk now, just message me and we will get you squared away. So thanks for hanging with me. Sorry about my Maui man voice tonight. But we'll see you guys this week. Have a good night.